Week 18, lesson four. Okay, so continuing on with our derivatives. Um, today you're gonna learn something called the chain rule. Um, and I'm gonna let you read it up in that box all by yourself. Um, I, I wish I had a really great explanation on how to do this or why to do this. Um, the best analogy that I can give you is envision yourself on a moving train, okay? Let's just say that the train is going 60 miles per hour, okay? The train itself is going 60, which means that you are also going 60 miles per hour, even if you're just sitting still, okay? Now, the second you start walking, let's just say that you can walk five miles per hour, actually maybe run five miles per hour, but whatever the case. Now, in relationship to the ground, you are going 65 miles per hour, all right? Um, and so you have to sort of account for the fact that the train itself is moving, all right? So when you go to take some of these derivatives, you have to sort of account for the fact that some of the things that you're taking derivatives of are still functions that need to have the derivative taken of as well. Okay, and you're also going to see some different notation on here just a little bit. Um, so like you're noticing here on the first one, we don't use this one as much, but it is still there and you will see lots of different notation. So here we go. If I am trying to find dy dx, that's just the derivative of y with respect to x. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this exponent. I'm going to put it out in front of the parentheses, which are not changing and I'm lowering that exponent by one. Now, this stuff that's inside is still a function and you still have to take the derivative of it. So you get two X. And then again, don't forget to clean all of this up. Combine like terms when you can. Multiply things together that you can. We're gonna leave it just like that. Okay, so the second one should be very, very similar. Um, right, I'm going to take this exponent, I'm gonna multiply it out in front. So f prime of x is gonna be three times the stuff that's in the parentheses. Decrease that exponent by one. And then I haven't taken the derivative of the stuff inside the parentheses yet, right? And if you're taking the derivative, you've gotta take the derivative of everything. So inside the parentheses, the derivative of that is three minus 4x, all right? And that one, I can't really clean it up. There's nothing I can really put together. I'm just going to leave it that way. Okay, so let's move this up, try another. Okay, so for this one, I am going to rewrite the original function as x squared minus one to the two thirds. Okay, I'm gonna write it that way first so that when I go to take the derivative Right, the exponent goes out in front. The stuff inside the parentheses will stay the same for a moment. Um, decrease that exponent by one, that's negative one third, and then take the derivative of the stuff that's inside the parentheses, which becomes two x. Okay, so now to clean this up, and this is where some heavy duty algebra skills start coming in. There's a numerator and a denominator. Okay, so you need to kind of be able to tell what's in the numerator, which in this case is 4x, and what's in the denominator, which in this case is a 3 and an x squared minus 1 to the 1 third. All right, now if that's not making sense, please don't hesitate to ask either in Zoom or in person. Okay, so for this next example, um, I am going to rewrite this only because I don't want to do the quotient rule. I'm going to write this as negative 7 times 2x minus 3 to the negative 2. So that when I take the derivative, I multiply this by what's out in front, 14. The stuff that's in the parentheses stays the same. I decrease that exponent by 1 and then I take the derivative of the stuff that's in the parentheses. All right, and then again, cleaning this up is all dependent on what's up top and what's down below. Up top is 28, and what's down below is 2x minus 3 to the third. Okay, so this example, I am going to do this one with the quotient rule. Okay, so here we go. I'm taking it kind of slow and writing everything out. Don't forget notation. Okay, so quotient rule is 
low. D high minus high. Now, D low is where things get really interesting, right? The derivative of that denominator is one third, then the stuff that's in the parentheses, right? Lower the exponent by one, and then don't forget to take the derivative of the stuff that's in the parentheses, all right? And then we square the bottom, right? It's square the bottom and away we go, so two thirds. Okay, so now looking at this and knowing that I need to simplify it, I'm seeing two things, let me highlight them for you, that are causing me concerns. This one third is causing me some concerns um, and this negative two thirds is also causing me some concerns. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fraction bust this fraction because it is a big honking complex fraction. But I'm gonna fraction bust it by multiplying the top and the bottom by three times x squared plus four to the two thirds times x squared plus four to the two thirds. Now, let me try to explain my logic. The reason I'm doing that is because I know when I multiply here, the one third and the three will sort of go away, right? I've taken care of that first concern of mine. And then here, when I multiply by this exponent, right, those exponents are gonna get added up. So it's gonna take care of itself also. So then I just have to make sure that I distribute over here and I need to multiply on the bottom. So here we go. Again, it's heavy duty algebra. The calculus itself is not difficult. It's the algebra that's difficult. So on the top of this fraction, to the left of the subtraction sign, I should end up with three times x squared plus four. And then on the right side of that subtraction sign, the threes cancel, that cancels, so I end up with minus two x squared. And then in the denominator, I've got a three, and let's see, adding those exponents, x squared plus four, two thirds and two thirds is four thirds. Okay, so now all I have to do is distribute and combine some like terms to clean this up, and I should end up with x squared plus 12 over that denominator of three times x squared plus four to the four thirds. Okay, here we go. So on this one. Okay, so I'm gonna start by taking the derivative of just what I see, right? So I'm gonna kind of ignore what's in here. I'll erase that in just a second. But no matter what's in there, I would have to take the two, multiply it by the stuff that's still in the parentheses and lower the exponent by one. So let me make sure, let me get rid of this really quick. Let me make sure to put the stuff that's in the parentheses back in there, right? This is 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 3. Okay, now, I've done sort of the big part of it, but I haven't done the derivative of the stuff inside the parentheses, which is the quotient rule. Okay, so it's low d high minus high d low square the bottom, and away we go. Okay, so let me simplify what I've got up there on the top. Okay, so outside I've got what, six x minus two over x squared plus three, and then in the parentheses, when I distribute and combine like terms, I think I end up with negative three x squared plus two x plus nine, all over x squared plus three squared. And all I have left to do is to put these together. So I have six x minus two times negative three x squared plus two x plus nine, all over x squared plus three to the third. Okay, so now let's try the chain rule with 
some uh, trig functions. Okay, so for this one, um, I'm going to take the derivative of y, so y prime. The derivative of sine is cosine of the exact same angle. Now, don't forget, this has a derivative, right? It has a derivative of 2. So if you simplify that, you end up with 2 cosine 2x. Okay, and then this one will be sort of similar. Last one, the derivative... Oh, wrong pen, sorry about that. Here we go. The derivative of y is going to be... All right, so the derivative of cosine is negative sine of the exact same angle. And then, don't forget to take the derivative of what you see, what you just wrote down, in those parentheses, which is 6x. So, simplifying this, I'm going to kind of move this out in front. I get negative 6x times the sine of 3x squared.